Peer tutoring. I'm Dan Wayne, your peer tutor. So the thing that every every budding musician, people learning to play music, love to hate the scale. Yeah, nobody likes a scale, especially if you're on a diet. Yeah, but uh, I digress. But it's kind of a necessary evil because learning it can be boring. Doesn't have to be. It can be. But if you learn your scales, you can play anything. Seriously. So let me just cover some basics because it, it ties into almost everything else. So a scale is simply how notes fit together in music. Now in Western music, whatever that means, it's just a caveat learned to use in this situation. There are, we use a, a 12 note scale. Okay, that's called the chromatic scale. That's basically all the notes from any point from its root to its octave. Okay, so what does that all that mean? All right, let's take right here, right? We're going to play this open E. Crank that up a little bit. Here we go. Right? That's, a, that's an E. All right? Now, that's the, that's the root E in this, in this case. And then this is an octave. It's the E again at the next higher level. So the notes in between there would be like this. Okay, so from that first one to this one are 12 notes. All right, now while occasionally a creative piece of music will have a chromatic run in it where you'll have three notes that ordinarily don't necessarily fit together, but it works. It just works sometimes. So other than that, you, you almost never hear talk of a chromatic scale per se, except for to explain how that works. Every note, if you start from that note, that, there I used E, I could just as easily use, let's say D sharp, which is one, I'll get which is a little bit higher than D, a little bit lower than E. Exact same idea. All right. Within the music that most people are, are accustomed to hearing, at least here in the West, you're going to have the most basic common scale form you might find would be what's called a diatonic scale. It's a scale that has seven notes or eight notes that include an octave, hence the term octave, octagon, eight-sided, right? Octopus, eight legs, octave, which is the eighth note above the root, which is basically the same note, but at a higher octave, as I just demonstrated a minute ago. E, E, the octave, okay? And each of these notes is separated by an interval. Now, these intervals have formal names such as major seconds, major thirds, perfect fourths, all those kinds of things. I'm not going to get into that in this lesson. If you already have some basic idea of scales but want to know all that stuff, let me refer you to somebody who's, who's already does this very well. It'll be like drinking from a fire hose, but it's well worth your time. Check out Rick Beato's channel. I'll link that right up here. And uh, you can look at his lessons on music theory where he gets deep into these sorts of things. I just want to show you how it all works together on a guitar because I want to get you from not knowing how to play a guitar to knowing how to play and you can learn all that other stuff later and it will it'll come in handy. It will. Especially if you want to get deeper into things, you want to start writing music, you want to start understanding music that's out there that might not be your simple four chord rock and roll. So anyway, so diatonic scale the root to the octave, right? So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with a C. The, the, the key of C. Okay, let's talk about keys. The key is like a natural family of notes that fit together, making a one diatonic scale. 
all right? Um, all of the musical notes have letters from A through G. Every scale, every diatonic scale has one of each of these letters. It'll have an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, an F, and a G. All right? The key will be whatever the major key for that, whatever that key is, will be based on whatever the root note is. So, for example, the key of C, the root note, of course, is C. All right? And then it'll go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and back to C. I like to start there because we don't get into sharps and flats with that because there are none in the key of C. In fact, quick advanced tip for you. If you ever look at a piece of sheet music um, and you look at the far left side of the staff, you see that squiggly line, it's called treble clef. You might see what looks like some hashtags and some lowercase b's. That's not what they are, but that's what they look like. If you don't see any there, that usually means that that song is going to be in the key of C because there are no sharps or flats. All right. So here's what it would sound like. The C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. There's your octave. All right. Now, you might know that my hand is half in, half out of the frame. You can't see it. I'll get to that later. This, the point of this at this time was not to show you how to play those notes, but simply demonstrate what they would sound like going from the root to the octave. All right. Now, the intervals between these notes are what are called tones and semitones. Sometimes they're called steps and half steps. Doesn't matter which way you talk about them. It means the same thing. All right. And when you're starting from this basic C scale, and you're starting with the C, once you go from there, it follows this pattern. So from C to D is called a full tone or a full step. All right. On a guitar, here's your C note, which is your third fret of the A string, your fifth string. And you can either play the D with the open D string. You could also go up two frets on the A string and play the same note. Okay. Quick. Someday useful piece of trivia, not right now, piece of, um, is that when you have this here, you have two of the same note, but they're not separated by a full scale. They're on the same. That's called unison. You have two notes, the exact same level pitch it's called unison that's different from say there you have an octave difference anyway i digress back to the intervals so from c to d is one full tone or on a guitar that would be two frets okay so now i'm going to bring the reference back to the open d string from d to e is also two frets notice i'm playing on the second fret of the D string. Okay, that's a full tone up from the D. All right. From E to F is half tone. Because it's only one fret. See, here's your E. Here's your F. E, F. Half a tone or half a step. From F to G is a full step. Yep. So there's F, there's G, that's going from the third fret of the D string to the open G string, which is your third string, or you can do the same things I did with the C to D, you can go up two frets on the, the D string. Two frets, one full step. G to A is a full step, is a full tone. See, that's on the second fret of the G string. And then A to B, I go to the open B string. That's a full tone. And then from B to C, which is the octave, is a half a tone. Notice I'm playing in the first fret of the B string. So to recap, you have the root. Then you're going a tone, 
a tone, half a tone, a tone, a tone, a tone, and a half tone. All right, and that is exactly how, no matter what scale, wherever you start to get to the octave, you're going to do that a tone, a tone, then a half tone, then a tone, a tone, and a tone, and a half tone. Now, one teacher I, whose videos I watched put it like this. It just made it somehow easy to remember. So if this helps you, take it. If not, toss it, whatever you want to do with it. But you can think of it as going tone, tone, half tone, separated by a tone, 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 half tone. Think of it as two tones and a half, three tones and a half, whichever way is easiest for you to remember. It's always that same set of intervals in that order in this bass mode. Now let me just go off on a little bit of a rabbit trail here because I'm sure somebody's going to watch this who knows a little bit about music theory and say, well, that might be true Fryonian mode, but if you want to do Mixolydian mode, it's good. yes, there are things that he's called modes. All right. So just real quick what modes are and a very, very basic because I'm, the more I read about them, especially in Rick Beato's work, the less I realize I know about them. But one hyper simplistic way to put it is like this. You take that scale of this key of C, of C, C D, E, F, G, A, B, back to C, but start again, B. You can start a scale at C and resolve to C. That is your, your root. It's also called an Ionian mode. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could go start with the D. Go D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right. But you keep the same intervals as the key of C. Why is that important? Let me just demonstrate real quick. So here is the key of D, just the way I just showed you. All right. So you have, again, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Those are the notes in the key of D. The, at that Ionian mode, that basic root mode. But if I was playing D, what's called a D, I forget, oh, sorry, a D Dorian, which would be the, the, the second mode of these things. There's seven modes because there's seven notes in every scale, right? So each, since you can start from each of those notes if you wanted to in a different mode, there are seven modes. The second one's called Dorian. You can remember it, not remember it, it's up to you. But this is what the, the intervals would sound like in the D Dorian. So here's the D Ionian. And here's the D Dorian. Notice it sounds different. Anyway, my whole point is just to show you that I'm always using what's called the Ionian mode, which is basically when you're starting with the root note of that key. I'm not going to get into modes, not in this lesson. I may not ever because I don't think I know enough to even teach. Other than what I just showed you, the difference between how to do that. All right. Getting back to, if, if just in case I haven't lost you yet. All right. So those are your, your intervals between notes. Those intervals are always the same. Yes, Ionian mode, the root mode, whatever scale you're going to play. But it's always going to be that same exact interval. So you start at the root, tone, tone, half tone, 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 half tone. All right, I also showed you how you could do the exact same thing with the key of D. Root, tone, tone, half tone, 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 tone. Now what I'm doing there, or and notice I'm staying right here. That's I mentioned that in the previous lesson. That's kind of doing things vertically. You can also do this thing horizontally by going up the fretboard. So go back to the C. You have Start the root, tone, tone, half tone, 
tone, tone, tone, F tone. It's the same idea, so now you're doing it all on one string. So you could do that starting from any note. Let's go back to the E. Let's go with low E this time. So you have E, right? Tone, tone, half tone, 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 half tone. Okay. The chord, the scales seem daunting at first. And you're right, practicing. Every other kind of drill, they're boring. Huh? Ah, see what I did there? Drill? Boring? Ah. Anyway, <laughs> I cracked myself up. Glad somebody laughs. Memorization is important. Building muscle memory is important. But once you learn them, you can play anything. Let me think. think let me think of a song off the top of my head. Um, well, it's wrong. I'm, as I'm shooting this right now, it's November 30th. We're getting ready. We're going to the Christmas season. So, let me think of a song. How about Holy Night? I like Holy Night. Not Ho well, I do like Holy Night, but let me go with uh, Silent Night. It's a night theme. Anyway, so let's see. Um... So it sounds like the song starts on a G note. Like if you. Sound right. So, so, no, that doesn't sound right. So, yeah, it's, I was <laughs> thinking out loud for music. It sounds like the, the third note of the, of the chord, the G, is the beginning note of silent night. So, if that's the case, knowing what notes I can use and which ones I can't, how might I figure out the melody to silent night? Let me see. I'm skipping over a lot of things in my process on that, but if you know, it's like silent night. No, that's not it. In fact, that's a note that doesn't belong. No, that's not it. No, that's not it. There it is. So see how I worked that out? It just see once you know the scale, it's not hard to figure out where that the song that you know already fits in that scale. And before you know it, you start making up your own stuff, but that's for the downline. But the point is there's good reason to work on scales. Okay, and our next next time we meet, I'm going to go over, we're gonna talk about the relative minor key. I'm also gonna talk about the pentatonic scale, as well as different positions on a fretboard that you can practice, that you can play your scale. So it's something that's called the caged method, or a version of the caged method, um, and how to apply these both in the diatonic as well as the relative minor. Um, Meantime, questions, comments, you put them in the section below. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the good things. Remember, the more you know, the more fun it is to play. See you next time.